So in this video, we're going to be looking at the DBX Drive Rack Venue 360 that we are using in our kits. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Auto EQ Wizard and uh, how to walk through that process and how to set that up. But before we get to the drive rack itself, there's a couple of things that we need to take care of on the board, the X32. So let's go over to the X32 and we need to um, set this to a clean slate before we start setting things on the drive rack. If you'll look at the board right now, you kind of notice that all of the faders and everything are kind of in the position they were in uh, when the board was last used. So how do we fix that? Well, the way we fix that is we're going to go to our scenes. So again, over here in the lower right hand corner, we have our scenes control. I hit view. It takes us to uh, our cues tab. I arrow over one time and there's our scenes. So the first thing we're going to want to do is use the reset scene. Take this every time you start setting up the system. Once you've got it all plugged up, once you've got it all hooked up, ready to go, you want to make sure to start off with that reset so that it puts you at a very clean baseline. Uh, it resets everything to where it needs to be and um, it gets us started. So to select the reset scene, I'm going to use this knob right here on the far left. And if you notice the yellow bar, highlight bar here, uh, right now it's currently sitting on scene two. I'll move that up and down here for you so you can see what that looks like. I'm just going to turn this knob until I get up to the zero, zero reset. Then I'm going to push down on that same knob. I get a warning saying you're fixing to load this scene. Are you absolutely sure that you want to do that? Yes, I'm absolutely sure. So I'm going to use the right arrow key over here, press that, and now the reset scene has been loaded. And if you notice, the faders moved down, everything moved to where it needs to be for a good, clean start. Um, and so now we're ready to move on to the next scene. So the next scene we're going to load is going to be our AFS sound check. So let's go ahead and load that again using the, the wheel to select it and then pressing down on that and confirming it with the right uh, mouse button, I mean with the right arrow key. And now you notice that our faders have moved up for channels one through four and we're kind of ready to go. There is one other thing you need to check before you get started on the wizards. And for that, you need to go through channels one through six. Now channels one through six should be programmed for the microphones. Um, the, each one of the, whether it be handhelds, whether it be body packs, whatever the case may be, channels one through six are set uh, for the microphones. But what I want to do is I want to go up here. I want you to notice up here in the left-hand quadrant of the board, there's um, five things that you need to look to make sure they are turned off. Those five things are, are your low cut, actually it's four, sorry, low cut, gate, compressor, and your EQ. You want to make sure that all four of these buttons are off, okay, on each individual channel. So let's run through that real quick. Channel one looks good, channel two looks good, three looks good, four looks good, uh-oh, five has the low cut turned on. So I'm going to press that to turn it off, go on to channel six. Channel six has the same thing, so I'll press that button to turn it off. Now our board is totally set for us to run the wizard. So from here, let's jump over to our computer, to the tech computer, and take a look at uh, the software. So we're going to load the software. You will find that down here on your taskbar. Right here it says DBX Venue 360, so let's go ahead and load that up. On the first screen, it's going to go out and search for the drive rack. In this case, it has found it. And so we're going to click connect. Now, if it doesn't find the drive rack, what you're going to need to do is get a hold of a technician and have them help you troubleshoot to find out why the network is not seeing uh, the drive rack. So from here, we're going to go up and select our wizard option. But before we do that, let me highlight something just to make you aware of this. If you notice over to the left of the wizard buttons, it says number one, and then we have stereo K12 mains plus AUGS K sub sub. That is what you want to see up there. If you see anything different, if you see a different number, if you see a different uh, title, you're going to want to call a technician immediately so that we can uh, get that reloaded back to number one and make sure that it is proper settings uh, for the speakers. Now what that setting is, is that we've gone into the drive rack 
and we have set the drive rack to match the speakers that we're using. The only time that should change is if we ever have to replace speakers with another brand or another model number. So verify that that's the number one and that you see the title that you see there on the screen. So let's go over to our wizard. First two wizards we're gonna totally ignore. Number one, we don't wanna run all wizards. That'll take too long and it does things that we don't wanna to do to the system. So we're gonna skip that one. The run system setup wizard, uh, we're gonna skip that one because again, that's if the, the drive rack did not know what kind of speakers we were using and so forth. So we're gonna to go to number three, which is your run auto EQ level assist wizard, okay? We're gonna let that load. Now I'm gonna do this in real time so you guys get a feel as to how long it may take for the software to load or for it to get into the next um, section. So we've got now a screen here that says select auto EQ uh, to, uh, to set up. We're gonna select auto EQ one. You don't wanna use four, five, or six because that pertains to the inputs and the outputs of the drive rack and if you select the other ones you will not get a correct reading and you'll have speakers that don't work so we're gonna select number one make sure it's highlighted and we're gonna say next now our next screen it says do you want to let is the first option there is level assist and auto EQ second one is level assist only we're going to come down to number three and do auto EQ only okay again we have already set the levels of the the speakers and the system to where we need it to be so all we're interested in doing is setting the auto EQ now let me say this uh, if you have not seen the video on how to set the speakers and what level they need to be at please pause this video go back and and see the speaker setup video and then come back and continue the wizard from here so we're going to select the auto EQ only we're going to say next now it's asking us what type of pattern does it want us to work off of? There's the recommended curve, there's the flat, and there's the reflective room. We're always going to use the recommended curve. Now, if you have an environment where the ballroom that you're in, for some reason, is really, really sensitive to sound. Prime example, if you're having a, a, a weekend to remember next in a gymnasium, <laughs> you're going to want to use the reflective room. But if you feel like your ballroom feels like a gym, then go ahead and use the reflective uh, room to help set the auto EQ. But uh, the rest of the time, we're just gonna use the recommended curve. So we'll say next to that and let that load. Now, the first screen that we have here, it is the, the little plug uh, it looks like a plug. It looks like a quarter inch plug. That's actually a little uh, picture of a microphone. This is showing you where to place the microphone in the room. For the larger ballrooms, let me say this uh, in regards to mic placement. For your larger ballrooms, anything I would say uh, if the ballroom is deep and maybe not overly wide, you're gonna to wanna to put that reference mic that is being used for the auto EQ, you're gonna to wanna to put that 15, about 15 to 20 feet in front of the tech table. If you're using a shallower ballroom, then you're gonna to wanna to place that mic at about 10 feet in front of the tech table. It makes a huge difference uh, when the drive rack is trying to read the room as to where you put that microphone. If you put the microphone all the way back at the tech table, it is not going to get a good reading because it is going to pick up the noise um, reflection from the equipment sitting on the table. So for a deep ballroom, you want to be 15 to 20 feet uh, in front of the tech table. For a shallower ballroom, you want to be about 10 feet in front of the tech table. So let's go back to our wizard here. So I've got my mic set. I've got the speaker set. So we're going to go ahead and hit next, and I want you guys to listen to what happens as we go through this. So let's hit next. Okay, so what you heard there is just a quick little uh, blurp that the system throws out to make sure that it can hear the speakers. That's all that was. So now what we have to do is we have to select how we want to run this. We're always going to want to run number four, which is best, which means you're going to have to move your microphone four separate times. But that's okay. 
uh, to get a true reading of the room. Now, uh, again, depending on the size ballroom that you're working with, if it's a, a deep ballroom, when you move that mic, depending on how wide the ballroom is, not only the depth, but the width of the ballroom, you're going to want to make sure you move that microphone when it tells you to move it to the left or move it to the right uh, or move it off center. You're going to want to put some distance from where the mic was to where you put the mic. So again, a good rule of thumb is move the mic 15 to 20 feet away from its last location, if at all possible. Now, if you're in a, a shallow ballroom, and you've got the microphone sitting 10 feet in front of the tech table when it asks you to move the mic back and off center then you're only going to be three to four feet in front of the tech table you just don't have the room to move it that's okay but if you do have the space to move it please be sure and move that mic 15 to 20 feet so that we get a really good reading of the room so we've selected best on the software and so let's go ahead and hit next now, again, the mic placement on the first one was just to get a signal that, to make sure that the drive rack could, could hear the speakers. Now we're actually going through moving the mic and placing it where it needs to be. So the first one is dead center of the room. If your tech table is off center, get your microphone into the center of the room. Whatever, if you have to put two cables together, whatever, get that microphone into the center of the room for this first reading. So we'll go ahead and hit next. Okay, you could barely hear that uh, in the background, but the drive rack is happy with the signal that it saw. Now it's telling me that I need to place the microphone to the left. But what you're going to want to do is, again, if your ballroom is wide, you're going to want to move that mic 15 to 20 feet to your left and hit next. Okay, now it's asking you to bring the mic back to the right and back towards the tech table. So again, move it back. You're going to want to go back to center where you started, come over to your right a little bit, five feet, and then come back five to ten feet, depending on how much room you have with your tech table, and then hit next. Okay, then for the final, you're going to, you, you see the mic is still kind of positioned where it was to the right, but you're going to want to come further back um, away from the speakers and then hit next. Okay, so at this point, it's run all four steps, and now it's calculating what frequencies and what changes it needs to make for the room. And here in just a minute, it'll give us a graph of what that looks like. Um, you don't have to pay a whole lot of attention to the graph once it comes up. Uh, it's more of a reference. You can see here um, the gray is, is what it read in the room. Uh, the, the yellow is the target that we selected. Uh, at the beginning and then of course your green is the result where it's going to be making some changes uh, to fit the room. So once we're done there we have to hit continue and here it's asking you uh, if we want to run this for another system or not. No we don't. We're just we've got the one drive rack we don't need to run it again so we're going to select no and then we're going to select next. At this point the Auto EQ Wizard is now making the changes to the drive rack. If you do not carry this all the way through, it will not update the drive rack. If, if you don't hit next on everything and then come back to the wizard menu, 
uh, and you don't see this at the end, then the changes have not been made to the drive rack. And then you're going to have problems that uh, the system is not going to be changed. You're going to go in and try to re eq the, the individual mics, uh, thinking that the drive rack has done what it needed to do to, to fix the room, and when in reality it has not. So always, always make sure that you click Next all the way through until you see the wizard list again. Now at this point, once you're done here, you can leave this screen on here because the next thing we're going to need to do is set up and run for the AFS wizard, and that will be in our next video.